few tips before we begin. This structure is called a folly. Although it looks like a little Roman temple, it's actually just a very big and expensive decoration. And while this one is with a number of other ones on the outskirts of Edinburgh, grouped together on a hill, they're the sort of thing that could be found in the grounds of grand estates and royal parklands in the 17th, 18th and 19th centuries. But I think my most important tip is that when we have a structure that is relatively simple, at least in its basic outlines, perspective becomes even more important. Because with a more complex structure, if our perspective is not quite right, sometimes the observer can be distracted from seeing it quite so clearly because of all the detail and the different elements there are to look at. But this is basically a box on a box on a wall, with the only detail being these very simple columns around the outside of the box. So we want to take a little more effort to get them correct. And my other tip is, even though this is a simple structure, it doesn't mean we don't need to look at it carefully before we start to draw. And looking at this, there are two, I think, significant things to think about. The first is, are all these columns equally spaced? Because I actually think there's slightly more width between the centre two columns than each of these columns and the end column. And I presume because in some ways this is an entrance that just doesn't happen to have a door behind it. Now, besides the columns, the only other decoration is this band along the top here, which has these vertical sections and probably what's a wreath in between. And the thing to notice is that with these vertical sections, there's one above the top of these two columns. There are two on each end and there's one above each gap. And so when I come to do those, I want to make sure I space them in that way and I don't just start going across the top. Because of the angle, it's not quite as obvious. But if I work to get the columns correctly spaced, then it will actually help me to space these decorations more accurately to see this alignment. So let's start drawing. Notice how much time I spend on this very first lining up the basics of part of the box that I'm starting to draw first. As always, I choose a section that I think I have the best chance of drawing in proportion. Notice I do these horizontal lines, top and bottom, a little bit less than where I think they're going to end up because I'm going to use the spacing of the columns to tell me where this finishes. It's just a bit hard to draw that far line and then to draw the columns and expect that I've nailed the proportions and the distance correct, that the columns all sit within that space. Whereas by drawing the columns across carefully, that actually gives me the outside of the building. The video has been sped up to four times my actual drawing speed here. So I do spend a fair bit of time trying to get these angles correct. As I said in the intro, in a structure as simple as this, the angles, the perspective angles are even more important because there's that much more attention on them. There are lots of straight lines very close together. Fortunately, I have a drawing style that gives me a little flexibility with them. Now that line wasn't quite right and I make a few corrections over the top of it. I always prefer to add the correct line on top of a line that's not quite right. I think at the end of the drawing it's a lot less obvious. Still checking my perspective lines because they actually have to flatten out as they get down towards eye level. So now I'm doing the platform that this little mock Doric temple sits on. Doric referring to the types of capitals on the top of the columns. These are the quite simple capitals. So now I'm working hard to get the proportions correct of the stand. And we have this rather dramatic angle of the stone wall to the left going along. What I didn't notice when I started doing this wall was that just before it hits the base of the folly, it actually curves out. There's a, a small rounded section, which you'll see me draw over the top of this straight line. Fortunately, I think it, it's not too obvious. 
and I'm trying to get these angles correct, aware that I've got three courses of stone, so therefore two lines between the courses of stone to put in there as well. And now just doing the, the base of the folly there. So now I go back to doing the top part and to get these details and proportions and angles correct. I've decided to not draw the capitals in at this point, but instead to get the angles of the entablature. The entablature is simply the part that sits on top of the columns and that whatever else is on top, in this case, a simple roof goes on top of that with an overhanging cornice underneath it. Very simple classical lines and architectural features. I'm now looking at some of the details that I haven't yet drawn, particularly in this upper part of the structure, the entablature. So now I'm positioning these vertical elements, as I said in the introduction, placing them at the ends and above the columns first and then spacing them between the gaps that are left. There is a little bit of um, decoration underneath them and then I position some circular motifs. Now with this side it's all very compressed because of foreshortening so I'm not really doing circles, I'm, I'm really doing more just vertical lines to represent the circles. Now I'm having to think about do I try and indicate the stonework and I decided because it's such a simple structure and because the stonework I feel like visually is an important element, the divisions between these large blocks of stones, it, it kind of adds to the sense of this is a somewhat monolithic structure. I decide to put them in. I also decide at this point that I will add some hatching later on to give some sense of shade. Now this photo was taken at a cloudy moment of the day and so there isn't any real clear sun direction that's evident. So when I put the hatching on, I have a notional direction of the sun. But at the moment, I'm still trying to get these lines worked out and the, the horizontal lines between the courses were stronger on the upper part of this left-hand wall. There was actually a larger gap between the courses, so they did cast a greater shadow. Trying to keep my stones correct and bearing in mind that as the stones move from left to right foreshortening means they appear to become narrower and narrower so I, I try and bear that in mind when I actually place the divisions for where they are. Now Doric columns are fluted they have this this vertical scallop that runs down them and leaves quite a distinctive mark they're also not straight, they do flare out slightly towards the base, which can make them a bit tricky to draw. So I, I do a bit of the hatching now under the overhanging cornice because that is the sort of detail that gives a sense of reality. And I do take that moment to straighten, or correct rather, some of the lines on the corners. I didn't get these lines particularly great. The, in the center and right hand section, they slope at too great an angle, but I did take the chance of realizing that with that left hand section to flatten them a little, which I think does mitigate the impact a little bit. So now just doing the sorts of shadows that would emphasize the form of the columns a little bit more. And now very quickly I put the hatching in. The hatching did actually take quite a bit of time uh, in, in real life, it probably took as long as the rest of the building took to draw or almost. And sometimes that's just the way it is. And if we don't want to put that time and effort and do it carefully and in a considered way, then we're better off not doing it. Because the worst thing is that we ruin a drawing with nice line work, doing some hatching that ends up being rushed and the lines don't stop where they should, they don't start where they should. And so, just checking the last little bits of overhang and doing a bit of extra hatching at a slight angle to darken what I've already done. And then our little Roman folly is done. G'day.
I'm Stephen Travis. I hope you found this interesting. I hope you even found it helpful. And if you want to have a go drawing this lovely little Roman inspired structure, you'll find the reference photo on my channel community page. So print off a copy and have a go drawing it. But look, whatever you're drawing and however you're drawing it, make sure you're having fun. I'll see you next time. Bye.